Hey guys, welcome to the second part of creating the change reaction game in Godot engine. So in the last episode, we created this, that is, if I hit play, we shall get a grid, which is procedurally generated like this by writing the code. We wrote a number of for loops to create the horizontal lines. We created the vertical lines, that is the depth field, the depth lines. Um, and then another set of horizontal lines for the second layer, right? So this much we done in the last episode. Now if I hit play, you can see that the depth of X is a little bit too much, right? So you, there is a lot of, the field of view is more, you can say. Um, uh, that means we have to have less of these depth effects. So we are going to change the field of view for that. So what we can essentially do is we can um, increase the distance between the grid and the camera and then decrease the field of view so that we get a less of a depth effect. So first go to the camera node, go to the FOV here that stands for field of view. I'll set that to like 30. Okay. And now I'll take the camera above, increase it in the Z axis by pulling this handle. Now if I hit play, I think this should be fine. Yeah, you can see that the depth effect is a little bit less now. I'll increase, I'll bring it closer a bit just so that it, uh, the grid will be more bigger, somewhat like this. So this is how you decrease the amount of depth that you want. So now we can easily see these squares. They are not too distorted due to the height. So what we'll be adding in this episode is we'll be adding the buttons for all these. Um, and so these are special buttons because they are not in the 2D space. They are in the 3D space, right? So we have to create our own kind of node for these buttons. So for that, I will create a new scene called a spatial button. So to create a new scene, uh, just hit this plus button here. So I go to the node section, hit control A, I want to add a spatial node. So there's a spatial button. So I'll express, press on the spatial and then I'll hit create. I'll rename this to spatial button. Okay. So the spatial button is, uh, you have to save the scene. So control S, spatial button dot ESCN. All right. So save. So as you can see, the scene is here. Now we will um, add a lot of components to this to make it like a button. So the first thing that we need is uh, something called as a rigid body, right? Rigid body is actually used for physics movements, but our purpose in this tutorial is uh, to use the mouse uh, position. If the mouse enters that rigid body in the screen space, the rigid body has some signals that can send that we can um, use. So for that purpose, we are using the rigid body. So just add the rigid body, select the spatial node, control A again, um, search for rigid body. So this should be the red one that is 3D. There is also rigid body 2D for 2D games. We are using the 3D now. So if you mouse over this triangle, um, you'll see that it has no children's shapes, right? It needs a body. This is just a node that is able to calculate the physics, but it wants a body to actually calculate the physics for. So I'll just add um, a shape. Uh, I'll choose collision shape, all right? So here is the collision shape. I will be choosing the primitive shape of square because it's a button, right? So it's already a grid. So, so rigid body has a collision shape now. Uh, the triangle in the rigid body is gone, but there is another triangle in the collision shape. So it needs a shape, right? So this collision shape has to be defined what type of shape it is working on. So if you go to the properties here, you, the sh you see the shape is null here. And then I will select a box shape, right? Basic. So you get this kind of big shape. Um, I think I'll also add another shape of plane. This is a visual shape. This is actually a body with just a collision mesh. All right, this, this box that you can see here, this you can't see it on the screen, but 
this physics are calculated as per this box for that body but you actually need something to see right so as a visual so just select this rigid body add something called as a mesh instance so when you add a mesh instance you have something called as a mesh so mesh is the visual part of what you see on the screen so I'll add a new mesh of cube or I guess, I guess I can add a plane right because it's a button it's going to be it's only going to be rendered from one side so planes are going to be rendered from one side if you look from below you can't see anything right so only from the above you can see now the shape is not exactly to that button um, to the um, plane that we have here so you can use these uh, dots here to actually bring down the size I'll bring it to about like this so it roughly matches like this a bit uh, a bit thicker so this will be our button all right so now um, we want this button to just be one unit wide and one unit uh, long right so as you can see it is two units wide so what I will do is go to the mesh instance go to the transform here in the spatial properties go down and you can see the scale the scale in the x-axis should be 0.5 that means it will be halved and the z-axis should be 0.5 hit enter so this is exactly 0 0.5 0 0.5 so this is actually one unit apart right so also I will uh, go to the collision shapes transform do the same thing here so that the shape also matches oh I just plus 10.5 okay cool so this is also 0.5 right so I'll just make the mesh the visual part of the mesh a little bit smaller so that we have some space it looks elegant we don't want we want to see the grid if it's exactly one unit wide and one unit long you can't actually see the grid it will be flush with each other when you inst instance it so something somewhat like this right so this is um, the mesh instance um, and next what we will do is we need to write in the code for this button so we need to attach the script to the spatial button so go to the spatial button hit the plus icon here again it will have the spatial button no gd ok the name is fine I'll hit create so now when you hit create you, I told that uh, the rigid body emits a signal, right? It, uh, it there is something in Godot called signals. So if something happens to this phys uh, physics body, um, there will be a call to a function. You can override that function inside the engine to do whatever you want. So if you need to see the signals available for each of these nodes, by the way, all the nodes in Godot have signals. Go to uh, select any node in, the, in this case, rigid body. Um, go to the nodes tab here next to inspector in the signals tab you can see all the signals that are over here right these are the types of signals that uh, rigid body can emit if something happens to it so the ones we want is these two mouse entered and mouse exited all right so if you want to implement that function in a script if I told you, you should you need to override this function that means you need to define um, your own version of this function so you can select that hit the connect button over here and it will ask for a script to connect it to so we already have a script that we just created on spatial button right so the method is going to be called on rigid body mouse center and yes make this function so it's going to create a new function uh, hit connect and now we have a new uh, function that Godot just made um, here we can write anything so whenever the mouse enters the the spatial button in the screen this function is going to get run right so we'll also implement the connect the um, second function that is mouse exited so mouse exited signal connect again on spatial button hit connect so here we have two functions right so I'll just save the scheme now um, and now um, we actually want to 
instance these spatial buttons right in the chain reaction game so let's first do that um, I'll just create a node to hold all the spatial buttons that are created in the scene so just select chain reaction add a simple spatial node so I'm going to name this as um, spatial buttons right so all the spatial buttons that are going to be in the scene are going to be a child of this node that we just created so we have to instance the spatial buttons right so for that we need to create a main script we, we actually still haven't created the main script at all so let's go and do that um, uh, select the chain reaction hit plus let it be chain reaction GD so this guy is going to be the main uh, script it's going to do all of the work it's empty uh, now but uh, it has uh, it, it will implement a lot of functions uh, this but I am actually planning to just use only this script because this is a fairly simple game with not a lot of data and a lot of code so I don't find the need to actually split this into two if there is this, uh, this kind of small game if you need to if you just split into two if there is a small script you have to um, send a lot of data between these two uh, scripts so I don't think that is uh, like really necessary for a, uh, a small game like this with not a lot of data to work with so it's okay that I just do everything in one function so first uh, what we will do is we'll copy the bounds that we declared in this script the grid maker by the way you don't need to go here you can uh, select all the scripts you have from here itself there's a uh, list of all the scripts you created um, here also there's a list of all the functions you have in that individual script so you don't need to scroll around like this to find the function just hit the function will be there so now um, we're going to the grid maker we'll copy these copy and then I'll just paste these so these are the same bounds that are in the grid maker right so now what we will do is we will create a new function called um, add buttons right so this add buttons is actually going to add an um, 60 spatial buttons those that is this scene this scene is going to be added 60 scenes of this spatial button is going to be added into the chain reaction okay so first we need to get the reference to this scene to add it okay so uh, to do that we will um, go over here okay I will just declare a variable to hold that spatial button spatial button right is equal to uh, there is a function called preload right preload you give it a path that is a string so this um, string is going to um, reference the scene over here so this is the project window uh, this you can open it even in the windows explorer just right click show in file manager so you have basically this thing just displayed uh, in the Godot engine here okay so yeah um, preload function it takes in a parameter of what kind of scene that you want so this folder is the res folder res stands for resources all right so resources folder has these number of TSCNs and the scripts you can reference anything to this variable so if you want any uh, scene over here to hold in the variable I will just uh, so in this case we'll use the spatial button dot ESCN so make sure the path is correct res uh, semicolon it will auto complete for you but just make sure that it is correct else you want uh, this will be null you can't reference it so add buttons so we need to add how many buttons we need to add 60 buttons right so the same way in the last episode for i in range um, up bound 
to down down bound oh so yeah first i just add from left bound to right bound not rigid body um right bound and then again for j in range um up bound to the down bound right so up bound to the down bound um we shall add a spatial button var make a new var s or sb stands for spatial button is equal to the spatial button that we have here dot instance instance is a function which creates an instance of this button into the scene now when you do this um this spatial button over here which is um uh which is a, uh, like uh, an object created from the class of the spatial button right uh this object is actually not put in the scene here so what um what we'll have to do is we'll have to add uh, we'll have to call the function add child to actually put it into the scene over here so i will add it to the child as the spatial buttons because this is the holder for all the spatial buttons that we create okay so i'll, I'll go to the chain reaction script so in order to access any child that is uh, the direct um like uh, which is in the inside the tree of the main um the the script you can use a function called get node and here you can give the path of all the three uh, children of this node right so we need special buttons so this is actually a long way so there is another shortcut in order to reference the children um you, you can just use the dollar sign and then type special buttons so this refers to the uh, child of that uh, node which the script is attached to so this works only for the children right so i just told um there's a function called add child so that means to this special buttons add the child what we need to add is um special button sb right so now when we add the special button we'll just hit play hmm nothing is getting getting rendered why is that yes we have the mesh instance right so sp special button dot instance this should work okay um so um so you're just calling the instance and adding it to the child yeah so if we hit play to go to the remote go to is not adding you know why is that because you are not actually calling this function oh so stupid okay we'll uh, do the same thing as we did in the um grid maker right we did the function we are calling it in ready so the same way we we'll go to chain reaction add buttons we'll call it in the ready not calling the function at all so now if we hit play you see they are falling right i'll tell you what's happening so all of the buttons are were spawned over here and the moment they spawn they are going like this because it is a rigid body right rigid body um it um obeys like um it not obeys um it acts with gravity so it has gravity enabled so the gravity is as we are looking from the top the gravity is going down right that's why it's disappearing into the depth of the camera so what we need to do is we we just tell the rigid body 
that don't act with the gravity you will just be a static body with no physics collisions you will not move anywhere in the entire game so to do that uh, select rigid body and then there is a mode here called rigid set that to static so this means that the engine optimizes this body it doesn't calculate any physics collisions uh, for that uh, rigid body so now if we go to the chain reaction and we hit play you see all of the 60 tiles are in the same spot so what we need to do now is we need to move all these tiles to their respective places right so I'll go to the chain reaction so after we are added to the scene here uh, I will move it by using SB dot uh, translation okay so translation is uh, the vector 3 will assign it to a vector 3 it is this uh, 3d position of the world so the x should be i and the y should be i will put it to 1 because it should be at the top of the grid because the grid should not um, obstruct the uh, we should be able to see at the top right so it should not obstruct when we are mousing mouse over the spatial button so if we do this sp translation is equal to i and j so the x axis should be i think this is uh, opposite let me just try yeah it should be opposite yeah good so because x axis is z right so x axis is z that goes from left to right so left to right loops from for i so i should be in the z axis and j should be in the x axis um so if we do now we're getting all the buttons but you see that they are offset by 0.5 right so simple fix here we'll just add plus 0.5 to the j and plus 0.5 to the i now if we hit play it should be in the right spot now we don't uh, do anything when we mouse over these buttons right so what we need to do is just connect these buttons that are here so when we mouse over them mouse enter and mouse exit it we have to do something right so what we will do is we'll just have a variable over in the chain reaction called current button okay it is going to be a vector 2 or I'll just assign it to null for now because if we are not mouse overing any buttons it should be null if we are mouse overing some button then it should have the coordinates of that button okay so the current button is currently null so now after we instance the spatial button right the spatial button scene is going to be instanced into the spatial buttons so what will happen is we'll have to get its parent that is the spatial buttons and its parent chain reaction and we have to set the current button to something to that button itself when we mouse over it so that is what we will do now so go to the spatial button node so here when we enter the mouse into that button we'll call the function get node this is used to get the node get any node in the scene so you can traverse to your parent or your child so in order to get the parent uh, give it the path dot dot that refers to the direct parent and again slash I want the spatial so the direct parent in the scene will be spatial buttons because we are instancing uh, below this so dot dot refers to spatial buttons dot dot slash dot dot uh, refers to the chain reaction itself so we want the chain reaction so we will put dot dot slash dot dot that is two steps above this node so if we what we need to access is this current button variable here so dot cur button is equal to uh, vector 2 we'll assign it to a vector 2 of this um, r uh, this spatial buttons position in the world right so 
go to the chain okay go to the spatial buttons this vector 2 should be translation dot z because it's in the x-axis and then translation dot x because it's in the y-axis right so I'll assign it to that vector 2 and now when we exit the button we'll set that this variable in the uh, chain reaction back to null so just copy this and paste it here car button should be set to null when we exit the mouse from that button so now what we'll do is we'll just have we we'll just print out what the way um, the status of the current button is so we have to print that out every frame so the compiler called functions that is the underscore ready runs at the first that is the starting of the game and every other frame after that for loops so the looping function is underscore process so if we enable this function here so this runs every frame called every frame delta time is a time since last frame so it's also having a parameter called delta so that is the difference between the time of this frame and the last frame so what we need to do is we need to call the add buttons sorry um we need to print out <laughs> the current button status so i'll just write print car button right so now if i hit play and now you can see it's printing a lot of nulls here as soon as i mouse over this button it's 0 0.5 comma 5.5 as soon as i mouse over it's 0 0.5 0 0.5 1.5 2.5 3.5 4.5, 5.56, 7, 8, and 9. All right. So we want the array to be 0, 0 over here, and then 9 and 6. Oh, sorry, 9 and 5 over here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. So if you want this to be at 0, 0, we'll just subtract 0 0.5, 0 0.5 from each of the x and z axis. So go to the spatial button and here you have the translation dot z subtract it by 0.5 and then subtract it again by 0.5 so now if you hit uh, uh, if you hit play now you should get properly the 0 0 1 0 2 0 3 0 4 0 5 0 okay nice so this is how we actually add spatial buttons to the chain reaction game so in the next episode we will actually be creating um, the balls that we need to place the atoms so till then um, if you have any uh, doubts or anything you want to share please put in the comments below and till then see you bye bye